Hello everybody on planet Earth and maybe even off planet Earth uh, someday. Ha ha, how are you doing? Way out there somewhere. Um, so uh, this discussion is about the geology of our planet um, and I wanted to look at essentially as many details as we possibly could. Uh, this discussion, just to knock you off your seat and to kind of rethink about everything that we're going to talk about in a moment here, this is a this is our planet Earth that we're going to be discussing and how that's related to everything else in the universe, including some spiritual aspects. Um, and I hope this discussion is is valuable um, to you personally um, in a way that you can. Uh, do something awesome um, so uh, I just wanted to say for people that are not familiar with what we're about to talk about what we're talking about may be important uh, not only next year or, or tomorrow but it might be important a million years from now or even further out hopefully uh, our discussion is 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 is, is correct and super awesome um so yeah so we can talk about things you know when we look at the geology of our planet this stuff took a while to make um you know some people say millions of years billions of years um and what we're about to do is to try to make sense of that um in a practical way uh logically and spiritually and i'm really struggling today this was a this was a this was a difficult day for me personally because, um, you know, the topic is just out of bounds. Um, and anyway, let me go through some things really quickly with you uh, so that you're not super bored uh, for the next million years. Um, and basically, we're going to talk about the geology of our planet um, and how that may be related to other places in our solar system around the galaxy and the universe whoa um so if we can get there and there's a lot of different things we're going to talk about um, i'm going to just show you some of these slides we're going to talk a little bit about this sun to straight how this relates to a potential capital of antarctica in the future um and let me just stop for a second here on this discussion. So some of the stuff we're going to talk about is going to be out of bounds, right? We're going to talk about capitals of other planets. We're going to talk about weird ideas about, awesome ideas about how it, the poles may really work in terms of communication spiritually uh, with other objects in the universe. Um, this is an out of bounds topic. Uh, for many people, um, including myself, and I, to be honest, this is not easy for me to talk about because it's not the way that I see the universe at all. This is the way uh, uh, that a lot of scientists maybe even look at the Earth uh, from a geological perspective. But anyway, we're going to talk about this whole region uh, and how that relates to something completely out of bounds. Um, off Earth, uh, we're going to look at this, which I, I've been calling the unofficial pole of Earth. This little area here called the Bering Strait, and how that relates to all this other stuff. We're going to look at every possible idea in geology, the main pieces of geology. If you're familiar, a little, my brother is a actual geologist. He went to graduate school for this, and he's an awesome guy. He knows a lot more than I do. Uh, but, and he actually got me really interested in a lot of this. So we're going to talk about some crazy stuff. Like up here, we're going to talk on the North Pole, how this may be connected to capitals of other planets. Uh, we're going to look at all these regions uh, here. Uh, I really hope this conversation is quick, uh, but man, there's a lot to talk about. So we're going to look at South America. We're going to look at the ESO Observatory down here in terms of this is the world's most important astronomical observatory. How that, why that was chosen here is an interesting discussion. Uh, we're going to look at a wildlife capital of Earth 
and how that may be related to the North Pole and some other things like that. Uh, and then here are various capitals of other planets. Um, so essentially the North Pole and the South Pole may have a electromagnetic field that will be linked to the rest of our solar system, meaning that these areas could be very important practically and spiritually in terms of how they're connected. We're going to talk hopefully a lot about the Ural Mountains and some of the first nuclear tests were actually done on this island on our planet uh, during the that era. Um, we're going to look at Madagascar, we're going to look at the tip of South Africa, some mysterious islands here and some mysterious islands in the Atlantic. We're hopefully going to look at all the faults and the geology there. We're going to try to look at all the details here, uh, particularly for the United Kingdom and Europe and some of the history about how uh, different types of people, white people and say Africans or black people, moved to different parts of the world and why that may have been spiritually. We're going to look at some telepathic ideas and uh, astrology pathways, how these oil-rich regions may actually be much more interesting uh, discussion. So there's just a real lot of geology right in here uh, that a lot of people are not talking about. We're going to try to look at these mysterious three islands here, this point here of how this is connected through Australia. Uh, there's another huge discussion in terms of African geology. We're going to look at how that relates to the jungle uh, and as well as the Saharan desert. Uh, there's some very interesting mining going on in the middle of the desert uh, and trains that get out there. The tip is out, the most of the diamonds on our planet, a lot of them have come from Africa. We're going to look carefully at some details there, uh, as well as some regions that maybe we shouldn't be mining in. Um, we're going to kind of try to look at the Mediterranean area here and see some ideas about uh, how this would be mysteriously related to the rest of the universe um, and even problems, historical problems. Uh, Jesus Christ, uh, Mohammed lived in this region. There's a lot of interesting uh, details uh, in the Mediterranean. Um, ooh, wow, did I mess up something? Oh, no. We're going to look at a crazy idea of a capital, of a potential capital uh, up in the Himalayan mountains, up in uh, basically Afghanistan, uh, this region right here being a capital off Earth, and how that might be important. Wow, I'm just realizing I'm talking about a lot of stuff here, but uh, essentially, if we are connected, uh, when we have discussions on other planets, thousands of years from now what would it be like to have a preliminary discussion here on our planet uh, before we get there or even why what regions we would use we're gonna look at a very mysterious Malaysian uh, Sumatra there's a gap in between here uh, most of the world's shipping goes through here this is a very sensitive region for biodiversity as well as electromagnetic fields uh, in terms of the declination field goes right through here um, and talk a little bit about that. Um, and this is more of the Japanese side of things. I've discussed this before, kind of looking at some uh, chaotic approaches to how we might be connected to the universe statically, uh, meaning uh, static if you're familiar with static weird kind of things um so kind of a static connection to the universe um and again we're going to try to look really carefully at this bearing straight um this weird mysterious land bridge where even the eskimos may have uh crossed at one point and this whole ring of fire in through here and just what that might mean we're gonna look at a very mysterious area called the hudson bay um and maybe even how that might be connected to other parts of the galaxy and solar system. Um, and then the, the Atlantic fault line, we're going to particularly look at, at Iceland and how that may be important. And then here's again the Ural Mountains. This is, a, if you're not familiar with the Ural Mountains, you definitely need to be familiar with them. There's, they're very mysterious. 
Um, and basically, it's uh, yeah. So I'm sorry, I'm not making this really funny, but uh, and interesting. But basically, what I'm trying to tell you here is that the Ural Mountains are really interestingly important. There's, it's it's uh, uh, it might be some kind of universal measure, uh, measuring stick. Uh, and then we're going to look at this mysterious point called India on our planet with Sri Lanka here and kind of discuss a little bit about what this is. Uh, why do we have such a mysterious area here? We're going to look at this like, cosmic loop area, uh, essentially the Caribbean. Um, why this is kind of spinning around in a circle here. Um, there's a lightning area here. There's just so many details I need to discuss about this um but this is a very fun discussion to have there's a just there's a lot of banana trading that went on early in history through here uh, i've actually been to the cayman islands my mom took us here once but mysteriously anyway uh we're gonna look at this whole other side of afghanistan where the the himalayas actually bridge out split into two sections and one is being kind of over here, and there's another part that heads out into China, uh, and then Japan on the far end here, and then Korea, and we're gonna kinda try to make sense of what this means uh, in terms of the Himalayas. And then again, you can see the long-term path of the Himalayas actually going all the way to Europe. So what would that mean to be standing here and actually have a physical connection with other people and life all the way across from west to east and how their afghanistan basically splits that point here into another area so that's a very interesting discussion and here you can see this mountain range again heading across here but then even going down to africa and then antarctica as well as a full land bridge all the way between north pole and south pole so we kind of have this north pole south pole thing east west uh and then just this is all the different mines on our planet so if you look carefully this is where we're mining our planet so really this discussion and i'm sorry i'm talking about this so fast because i want to go take a walk and do some other things besides discuss about this but uh it's just scary important what we're talking about we're basically looking at every single mine on our planet this is our natural resources. This is our only planet that we are on right now. So we need to carefully understand these regions. Uh, so let me go back to this map. So again, this is not, uh, I'm gonna have to pause here for a second. So yeah, uh, geez. Um, what I really wanted to say is that, um, you know, I just went through like so many details um, and really this is not the way to look at the whole entire planet it's you know we're, we're probably looking you know a thousand years into the future maybe a million years into the future about some of these topics um but uh the real way is to think even beyond that and that is really up to you um it's not my role to really think really far out here um but i'm trying to think about some things here that might matter for a while um, in terms of our geology but and I just wanted to thank you guys and everybody personally that um, you know take a look at what's going on here um, I'm gonna go take a break for a little while um, I would be happy I'm gonna try to upload some of these images and things so you can take a look at the details and then I'll be back to discuss some more details because this is just way stressfully important to kind of think about things i mean we're talking a thousand years into the future here maybe even beyond so i've been under a lot of stress just thinking about this guys um but uh let's go back through this really quick before i get out of here and try to get some fresh air um there's just so many details um and what I wanted to say is that our local university and many universities have a full scale image, like it's a ginormous printed image of the geology of our planet. And you can stand next to it, it's probably taller than you. At University of Idaho, University of Wyoming, uh, Duluth in Minnesota has a, University of Minnesota has a uh, big images of like Mars, 
geology of Mars and some other area, other planets. I think they don't have anything other than Mars. But anyway, uh, but uh, it's super cool to take a look at all of this. So uh, what I wanted to emphasize is that there's a lot of details that I have not discussed. Uh, like, for example, I circled these two things in green. Notice there's a little island off the coast here. I noticed someone mentioned Greenland in the chat here. Greenland seems to be very mysteriously, possibly even linked to Africa here. You can see there's an island here, an island here. I've been looking at this for a little while. Uh, because the importance of Africa in the center of this whole discussion, uh, and then kind of taking that discussion out of the center and looking at Greenland, but specifically, and then also this little yellow circle here being a futuristic home for, wow, the capital of Antarctica, and then here being the capital of the North Pole. And one of the reasons that we may want to do that is because it's nice to be able to tr go between the North Pole capital and the South Pole capital quickly. And also it's very cold on the North Pole. It's actually unrealistic on the South Pole. The South Pole is even colder, but on the North Pole, it may be wise just to have a nice place to live. And this actually incidentally points to the South Pole's magnetic pole. So there's a kind of a, a strategic spiritual reason because of the fields in this region pointing to the South Pole, even though it's on the North Pole. So it helps us think about the North Pole and yet spiritually connect with the South Pole. So there's a very important reason to make that be the capital of North Pole and even have this be a second capital to the North Pole in terms of a wildlife capital because it's not just uh, animals on our, it's not just people on our planet. There's a lot of wildlife and we may want to someday think about how to work with the wildlife on our planet and on other planets and giving the wildlife a capital of the North Pole may be a very wise decision and listening to animals on our planet carefully. So that's why we may, and I didn't circle that because it's a private capital, it may be not for humans. And you can see here, uh, my mom was actually born in Jakarta and my great great grandfather witnessed the Krakatoa explosion right here. But this little area right here actually points to the capital of South Pole, uh, of Antarctica. And I wanted to discuss that in detail about how important this little triangular region is. I'll bring up a quick image here so you can see, but this whole area is just loaded with volcanic activities, earthquakes, and then it points, there's a kind of a slingshot heading down with this triangle into this region. So that is very mysterious. And there's another almost slingshot heading out through here. Uh, this is the capital, say, of Antarctica, North Pole, and then a boot heading out here. And you can see on this how important that boot is. You can see here it's kind of flying out into outer space here with New Zealand and potentially what, and I'm actually calling these Freedom Islands. These are way far out there islands uh, into the Pacific. Uh, and this actually is connected down here with Tasmania and then even as far as way as the South Pole. And you can see on the opposite side of the South Pole, we have this whole region where this, this major buildup of earthquakes, and I'm sorry, this is so slow on my computer because we're just talking about hundreds of thousands of earthquakes that we're looking at here right now. So this whole area basically shooting something out, not only into space, but across the entire ocean here, heading way up here over to Hawaii and then even to the North Pole. So this is very mysterious because that slingshot region may actually tell us something about this region the ring of fire here and I don't want anyone to lose sight of how important Alaska is look in the last 30 days you can see almost all the earthquakes on our planet actually if you happen here so this whole boot region that we just looked at heading up to here uh, and some other regions so you can see this region actually may be very interestingly important if we one day understand what is going on here, imagine thousands of years from now, millions of years from now, this may still be extremely important. So it's just 
really cool discussion to have. Um, and again, this is that whole triangular region with Jakarta, and I didn't show that line. Maybe I can re... I'm gonna do it in red here, but that one kind of head out here to that island. I'll resave this image. I'm gonna try to... I tried to upload these to Facebook. It wouldn't let me because it's so much data. It was over 30 images uh, to load, uh, and it may be 100 megabytes. Uh, but uh, again, here's that North Pole that we're looking at. It's divided up into so many different sections, all the way down here to Washington, Vancouver. There's very mysterious islands in this Ring of Fire area, as well as on this opposite side, north of, north of Japan and this island here, as well as these three islands, which may become extremely important. If we try to colonize Mars, it may be simplest to use this island as a spiritual connection. And you can see here I've outlined all the details in one map for you to consider. Sling this kind of area here, this area here being that, that circular path, and then this whole area here. I didn't draw the, the lines here, but you can see the three major islands on the North Pole, as well as this guy here. This whole region, kind of a region here, and looking at a comparison, this is out of scale right now, so we're not looking, the North Pole actually makes it look like it's bigger. It's not a circular map here, so it doesn't show you the exact uh, correct image, unfortunately. But these I did in that way, so you can see perspective. And you can see here that there may be so although Afghanistan is very important for the discussion, there's also a potential to look at a telescopic capital, a capital that of places that we will never even reach. Uh, you know, we have observatories here, and we can have discussions about what kind, you know, exoplanets and different types of stars are visible up in the mountains in these in this region there's a major observatory and i wish i could show you an image but if you look it up eso you can see that observatory it's a major uh we're talking huge types of telescopes they have ones that are bigger than many football fields there so uh but, it, but the geology of the entire South America is very important to look at as well, not just that region. So, And again, here I've circled this whole northern region here, as well as this wildlife capital and Hawaii. And I kind of put Hawaii completely out of the discussion. <coughs> I'm really sorry. I need to... <clears throat> I've been in a lot of stress today, and I'm really sorry about this discussion. But unfortunately, there's people outside laughing at me, so that's great. Um, and... Here you can see, again, the North Pole, and uh, you know what I was really, what you can't see on this map, it depends on the, the coloring uh, of these geological maps, but when you see different colors and you do this, there's different, way, there's different ways to look at the geology. For example, the depth on our planet, this is maybe more surface level, but essentially different depths have different geological perspectives. So, but this Ural Mountains is very interesting because it may give us a measurement for how far into our solar system and galaxies, you know, we what we should think about uh, in terms of a measurement, um, a spiritual measurement, and even Moscow and Uzbekistan. And there's a very weird things that have happened in these regions spiritually. If you know anything about Islam um, and Christianity, actually. The, there's two books in Islam. One is the Quran, the other is the Hadith. And the Hadith was actually developed after the Quran. It's kind of like the Bible where they have the Old Testament and New Testament. <clears throat> that was developed right in this region, actually in <clears throat> north of Afghanistan, in Uzbekistan, right in here. Um, so there's been some amazingly important um, history developed in these regions, uh, whether it's Christianity over here, in the Middle East in general. So hopefully we can discuss some of that. Um, and there is a huge dis question about how Africa plays a role in the future of everything, right? Not only from the jungle's perspective, but from the geological perspective. If you 
uh, have a fancy rock or a diamond. It may actually be from Africa. And what that means is very important. Um, so we need to think about that and especially preserving Madagascar here, how to stay away from mining heavily in, in places that we don't really know what we're doing yet because it may matter. A hundred years from now, our perspective of Earth may be very different than it is today in terms of what we need to do with the natural resources if we radically redefine things spiritually, like if we start to wake up to what is going on with our planet, not only logically, but spiritually. So uh, that may really change our perspective of what we want to do here on our planet. And again, a lot of that started in Europe, and you can see... Uh, the United Kingdom and there's basically a whole section of different rock up north here and you can see that that actually is Norway uh, Sweden and Finland and they have that pink rock which is very hard rock up there and and you can see down through here uh, basically Greece and some other areas and I circled these two as eyes and I've been talking about these as field eyes um, but really when it comes down to our earth um, these this region here uh, the Middle East and I'm gonna try to go over there I'm sorry about this I'm trying to move this in a way that makes sense so you're really basically looking at some of the earthquakes right there in the Caribbean and as we cross the Atlantic Ocean you can see this whole fault line is extremely important discussion and the reason is because it's a very serious fault line it's, it's straight and these other fault lines are not completely connecting the North Pole and the South Pole. So there's a whole discussion in there of that. But you can see how important Greece is in the earthquake discussion. And this is only the earthquakes from the last 30 to 50 years. Um, there is a lot more earthquakes than these. Um, so, uh, But essentially what I'm trying to say here is that these two eyes are unlike any other eyes that we have on the planet here and we have that connected to these two pathways here so there's a whole discussion and this could be more of a cross east west one and this could be a north south as you can see but these point here and there's some very mysterious uh, points right here and here and here as well as this very mysterious island and remember this area is no joke. Um, the Middle East is not, this. if you drive a car, your oil has most likely depended on the Middle East. So the future of movement and the past hundred years almost has depended on the Middle East for oil. So it's a really serious discussion there as well. Um, but let me bounce back to these maps. So again, those are those field eyes that we were discussing a little bit. And then these are these very mysterious pathways. So essentially boats have been traversing this through here. This is the uh, uh, Suez Canal uh, through Egypt, as well as the Persian Gulf. Uh, if you think about it, uh, you know, there's been major conflict in this region. And what's going on here is not just logical. There's some spiritual stuff happening here that we should definitely consider. And I tried to highlight some of these points here that are particularly interesting. And if this becomes a centralized focal point, Afghanistan, uh, think about the Himalayas. It's not just, it's the tallest. So like, like we have mountains that are, you know, uh, 10,000 feet, 20,000 feet. These are three times the size of the mountains that we have, most of the mountains in North America. And this particular point region here is the highest it turns out that the highest mountain is actually on this side which is everest but the actual main part of that mountain range is right up here and so it, it actually peaks up in this region uh, in terms of many of the higher mountains so and that that splits right in here so and that may not be totally true there's certain mountains along the coast here but anyway so the point is, is that there, there's just such a convergence of East and West in the Middle East here that we definitely should think about um, in terms of collaboration. So, And then you can see this whole region here again. Um, I tried not to circle anything here because I really wanted people to think 
about this area very abstractly. Like, there's just so much going on here. Uh, think about all the details that were made. I mean, these any this is like an island that could be a hundred many hundreds of miles or thousands of miles there's many thousands and thousands of miles of land and the earth has been you know, god the universe has been doing stuff here for thousands and millions of years there's a lot of details here and i didn't want to like say oh this detail really matters look at circle that so i tried to stay out of this discussion almost entirely because I have some of my preconceptions about this region, but I'm not going to talk about them because that's really up for you to think about. Um, and you can see all the complexity. Africa is so much bigger than all the other continents um, except for Asia. And it's just important to realize that although there's not a lot of volcanic activity on Africa today, there was at one point in history and uh, the jungle is there and it's right along the equator and you can see some regions here uh, to really think about carefully and then here is more of this jungle region which I kind of triple circled as we need to rethink about carefully um, the natural resources and then here uh, again is the Mediterranean um, and Cyprus is another really interesting discussion point um, that you may want to look at carefully. It's it's definitely got this weird point here hitting out into this region. Um, and you can see the boot here of Italy. And remember, New Zealand actually has a disconnected boot. Um, and there's that other boot on the North Pole. Um, but you're kind of, this whole region here, uh, Ibiza is like a very big party region. Um, but this is a whole separate area than Greece uh, entirely, right? Um, and there's also a lot of islands off the coast here and just a huge amount of discussion uh, in the Mediterranean because look at our planet. Like, let me take a step back and look at the overall geology here. I'll just take, I'll zoom out. I'm sorry, this is gonna zoom out too much here. Uh, sorry about that. But look at our planet. This is all we got. Um, and, you know, we looked at these two lakes here. This is the Mediterranean. It just has that little cutoff here there's not a whole lot I mean anyway so what, what I'm trying to say is that um, we got to be careful you know uh, this is our planet um, and um, natural resources are very important so this is kind of the preliminary discussion because that's why I wanted to look carefully at you know what are we gonna do um, about you know having uh, you know 12 billion 13 billion people on the planet um and how that even relates to the natural resources so uh and the the geology is is critical for that discussion so again mediterranean here and then here is that alternative capital off earth discussion uh that we definitely need to have and then looking at this i've been looking at this for a while and it's just completely perplexed me this these two islands and i want to look at this really carefully with you on the map so you can see just how important this is. And I wish, I wish I didn't really. I, I wish I could turn this off. But you can see there's. Uh, let me let me try, I'm really feel bad about turning this off. But let's turn off these so you can see just the. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't do this. I'm sorry. I'll keep them on. I'll just. Sorry about this. Um. So. Let me go back to this map here. So you can see if I zoom in here. This whole region right in here, if you understand anything about the shipping of our planet, so much of our products have come from Asia and China and Southeast Asia and India. They basically have to travel through here, around here, <coughs> excuse me, and then through the Suez Canal or even across the entire Pacific Ocean to Los Angeles. Um, but this little passageway has been very important for a very long time. And if you look at the shipping, I, I, I'll try to load up a map later for you to show you the importance of that route. Um, but, <clears throat> um, but anyway, so I wanted to just uh, kind of touch the surface on that. So what I'm trying to explain to you is that this area can give us a preliminary understanding of the rest of that whole Southeast Asia, Indonesia, Philippines, and everything. So <clears throat> essentially Thailand, Thailand gives us that bridge out into this region right <clears throat> it's the it's uh 
super important to, discussion to have. Um, if you look at, let me just, I'm sorry to kind of <clears throat> talk about some of the specifics, but if you think about it in history, if you're, tr you can't really even see these islands, you'd have to go through, uh, historically, you know, you may have traveled down to Vietnam, across the coast here, gone through Malaysia and then crossed the border here through Singapore and then gone out into these islands this way. It's a little bit harder to go across ocean when you don't know where you're going. Um, it can be very scary. So <clears throat> this pathway is actually much, is very important pathway for human pathway. And we see that the population in Jakarta, for instance, is where the most of the population is right now today. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I need to get a drink. <clears throat> So please forgive me. I'm trying to go through these details as fast as possible. And there's just so much to talk about. So again, that land bridge is very important to think about. Um, <clears throat> just as that whole point is up here in North, uh, this connection between Alaska and Russia. I hear you can almost see uh, Russia from that point. Um, <clears throat> But let me zoom out here again, and it's going to change the geology dramatically. Sorry about that. But again, the discussion is not just on the equator. The discussion is definitely on the North Pole and South Pole. And I have a separate discussion on how to start beginning to think about how our entire galaxy is connected to the equator, um, as well as the North Pole and the South Pole. So that's a huge discussion. Um, that will be very important uh, in general. So, uh, yeah, and uh, let's try to conclude this as soon as possible. I didn't want to, you know, if you really looked at the geology carefully back on these other maps, I mean, I just wanted to express to you about Japan here is that all this mountain range here, all these earthquakes, this whole ring of fire area, these are the major earthquakes that we've had on our planets. If you look at this mountain range all heading off out into here and then you get this Japan, it basically dead ends in Japan. It's like California. After California, there's nothing. After Japan, there's basically open ocean. So that's an important discussion to have. Um, here is some of the bathymetric imagery. I loved this image. It's just, it really, like I'm saying, if you have different perspectives of the same image, it can really radically change your perspective and you can see this whole pathway here is very interesting, which I've discussed before. This is kind of the plate tectonics, looking at how the shift is on each one of these plates. You can see there's major shift going each of these directions, and that's very helpful. And then this is kind of the different shifts. So it's not just there's shift down, there's shift up, and there's shift sideways. So you kind of have different types of shifting. And then here's a really cool diagram showing all the major earthquakes. You can see Asia definitely and South America definitely having a lot of the earthquakes. There's a whole page on earthquakes. This is something I used to run as a screensaver. You can have a screensaver that shows you all the earthquakes. That used to work really good. It's not working anymore. Here's some of the field diagrams, and I wanted to basically discuss that. And then the forces where we may actually have future earthquakes and a soil map. And then this is all the mining. This is that mining discussion that we had. Um, and I didn't really, this is a temperature map too. So a lot of this uh, depends on the sun. And, but anyway, so uh, again, that's Japan here. Uh, here is that bridge that we're calling the unofficial pole off earth. So the discussion here is that if we start having arguments or just debates essentially on in Mars or other moons or other planets, we may want to preliminarily discuss the pole discussions in this region right here. Um, if the pole is actually spiritually connected uh, to other poles around the solar system. So there's definitely a polar discussion question there. And this looked so cool. If you look at how this is like spinning around here, Hudson Bay, and there's a whole discussion on how Hudson, this point connects to Florida. It's the same shape as Florida, which is the same shape as Lake Michigan, and it all gets into these three uh, lakes, if you will, um, that are very interesting to discuss. And this is again about the Atlantic fault line and looking at how we can basically look out into the universe so there may be a way to use the Atlantic fault line to essentially from Iceland 
look deeper into the universe than we've ever been able to look um, essentially using the the uh, the fault line on earth um, so using that uh, essentially studying the earth in order to study the solar system so if our earth has been spinning around the solar system for so many years and uh, galaxy and all that uh, how can we better use the fault line to actually study slight movements in the fault line as kind of a form of radio astronomy or even geological astronomy so there's a huge discussion on that in terms of things so and again here's that Ural Mountains which is a whole separate discussion it's not really considered a fault line but it's a very mysterious a way to look at measurement um, astrophysical measurement and other details and then here's that major point of India again I'm gonna try to get offline here so again there's this whole spinning circle and I've had a huge discussion with people on this 23 and a half degree question of not allowing technology essentially to be on the equator so being having the off having an offline equator and basically focusing on kind of a backup plan for not really having internet and uh, wireless and all that and just kind of looking at a way to uh, think about uh, things differently and this whole spinning area why is it spinning in a circle like this well that could be related to something that we need to understand about our entire solar system uh, why this is spinning in a circle here and this is called the lightning lake uh, and this may even have uh, to do with life itself so close to the jungle here there's these mysterious islands here <coughs> the Panama Canal over here and Bahamas um, so basically I've had some detailed discussions about uh, Lake Maracibo if you're interested and those are super interesting as well as a film project and you can see Dominican Republic being right here in the center of that whole thing which actually if we take it to the other side of the planet mysteriously we have an island the same shape as the Dominican Republic and actually divided it in half too. This part is Indonesia and this part is Papua New Guinea. And uh, my grandfather actually traveled to Haiti to work after a major earthquake. Probably shouldn't be, anyway, but um, so yeah, so sorry about talking about all this details. Um, there's just so many more details than I'm making out to be here, but, and, um, let me close on this. I want to re-look in the camera here and say, hi, guys, a million years from now and a thousand years from now, and you especially, too, who's just listening to this. Um, wow, right? Um, we're looking at some cool stuff here. But, you know, sometimes, like, you know, one time I had, like, a really bad day, and I was at my mom and dad's house, and you know, it was, like, really dark out, and I went out, and um, they live on the ocean front on an island, and it was like the middle of the night and there was no moon out like tonight i looked up in the stars and the whole entire milky way was there and i just realized like after doing all this research i was like i was just like man i was such an idiot i was like why am i doing this research you know it's like it's like just walk outside look up at the milky way and you're gonna kind of see uh, a different truth there so wherever we are on the planet you know, we, we can look up at the at the at the galaxy or uh, you know um, even some nebulas and, and some things uh, or even another galaxy there's Andromeda nearby so but anyway whatever so my main point is that um, you know like there's a lot more to it than just what we're talking about here so uh, and definitely this is not the only way to look at it and here's all the mining activity and we'll kind of close it on this we, we need to rethink about this. And I circled some red zones because, man, I do not like the idea of mining in some regions. Um, in these areas here, which are so important to biodiversity, as well as on the North Pole and the South Pole, we should almost completely forget about it for the next few hundred years until maybe even thousand years until we really understand spiritually what our planet, what we're trying to do here on Earth. Like, why start tearing up the planet uh, when we maybe need to really think about what's going on. So there's definitely some regions that we need to rethink about in terms of the activities, in terms of things. And I'm going to go 
for a little bit of a stroll here. I hope you've enjoyed the discussion. And um, I'll leave it on this one so you can have a little bit of a discussion piece of what we just talked about. Um, and I'll be hopefully back, but I hope not to talk about this too much more. But all these different areas um, are super important. I didn't even circle the Ural Mountains here. Sorry about that. But um, anyway, so thanks so much. Okay, well, I'm going to try to upload some of the images. Um, but man, uh, don't really... Let, let me just post some of the links to the geology map here and i would say man don't even look at this online like this is a terrible way to look at the discussion uh, like i said um you know the best way my brother evan he's a real geologist and what he does is he's a rock climber and he goes to the local gym he's probably at the gym you know a few nights he used to go a few nights a week and try to rock climb but he's rock climbed like so much stuff and that's the way like 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 you can say this on computer all you want but uh you know he's climbed uh, you got to see some of the pictures it's it's hilarious the stuff he's climbed um let me try to find us some pictures you'll think it's hilarious so um but like i'm saying there's all kinds of ways to study things this is not the way to do it um i'm just like I said, I've been in absolute pain just trying to discuss this discussion here, so it's not the way to do this at all. Um, but I wanted to get through this here just to see another perspective, um, but certainly there are better ways, um, like just enjoying the night and walking outside and enjoying your life um, and uh, things like that. So. So again, I just really wanted to apologize for this discussion. Um, there's just so much that we talked about, and it's probably really painful for you guys as well as for me. And that's the reason uh, that we all need to be careful about perceiving the Earth like this. Um, but there's certainly a whole class of really painful discussions that people like to have about some of these topics. But anyway, so uh, yeah, so basically uh it's not uploading these images <laughs> so that's gonna be a little bit of a trouble here but um i'll be back a little bit later thank you so much um yeah so hi i'm back here uh and uh yeah i just wanted to uh really say there's so much more to the discussion here um and uh, the perspective really needs to radically change um, in terms of things. Um, so, uh, you know, and, and basically perceiving how you personally um, matter a lot. So the really big discussion here is that... Um, one of the funny things that I've been waking up to in my life uh, is that uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to talk about this a little bit later. Sorry about this. Hi everybody. My hair has a funny thing sticking up. Uh, I was gonna try to say something funny, but the dogs are yelling next door, and uh, maybe I shouldn't try to keep this conversation serious. Um, but uh, I'm gonna try to upload the images here. Uh, for some reason, it wasn't working very well, um, and uh, all these images will be editable. Uh, but what I really wanted to say, I've been talking about universal ideas um, of importance uh, some of them may last a while right um, these ideas that we're looking at here of uh, the geology uh, in particular so uh, you know as we start thinking about how to have a peaceful life not only on our planet but other planets we need to think sometimes it doesn't always help to think uh, this far ahead it's given me a big headache for instance uh, and, uh, you know, whether we're talking about the capital of Antarctica, like we're talking about here, the capital of the North Pole, 
or different planets, uh, futuristic ideas on how we might look deeper into the universe than even is conceivable today, or even start traveling across the universe in something other than just a spaceship. So there's a lot of practical people out there saying, hey, the way to get to Mars is by a spaceship. That might not always be the case. Uh, there may be specific things on our planet that we need to learn about uh, in terms of spiritually to do things. Uh, we're kind of, I don't know, call it the end times if you want, but we're in a different era where there may be some radically new ideas in terms of spirituality uh, that really matter in practical ways, even as far as space transport um, and getting to other places within our own solar system. Uh, and some of these ideas, uh, I hope that we've looked at things that matter for the next... I don't like to waste time talking on video. This is terrible. This is... I, I can't even explain it enough how terrible it is to sit around and watch video, but... Um, I feel like uh, maybe if we're going to talk about the next few thousand years, whatever, let's have a video on it. Um, but uh, all I'm trying to say, though, I wanted to add a really important part of the discussion, and I, I have no way to, to explain this because it's so hilarious to me. Uh, it's that thing that you don't believe. It's 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 the, sometimes it's yourself, right? You know, I had this discussion the other day. Like people are wanting to die right now. Like it's kind of hilarious because. We have so many people on our planet, and we have actually some of the best standard of living in the history of forever, right? You can fly pretty... There's all kinds of things that are possible that were never possible before. You know, I'm talking with people in Africa, in Asia. Uh, who knows where you're listening to this from or even where this will be discussed. Um, all I'm trying to say is we have a lot that we can do that's great. Um, let's try to stay positive here. These end times, all this hell talk um, and things. Um, certainly there's some very serious problems that could happen. Um, that definitely probably could happen. And we need to be very cautious. But uh, all I'm saying is that you know, as you start to think about some of these ideas, uh, what I'm trying to say is that you... Uh, you really matter a lot. Everybody really matters a lot. All the life on our planet really, every detail matters a lot. So that's kind of what the really important truth is, is that if everything eventually affects something else, uh, eventually we're connected to the entire universe. And even wherever we're going after life, um, we dissolve into something else. So, um, or not, maybe that's not the right word for it. But anyway, so all I'm saying is that uh, don't give up and try to, like, I'm basically giving up right here. This is my next million year discussion. Like, okay, hi guys, a few thousand years from now. Um, I worked on this and this is what we discovered. Um, but uh, what I'm trying to say here is that um, look at it very differently than what I'm looking at. This is the reason that I made progress here was actually partly because of spiritual stuff. Like it wasn't just, oh, there's a landmass here, there's a landmass here. We started to think about spiritual aspects of what this means beyond um, just the facts here, like what we can do with those facts. And, and so, and actually all these ideas, like although, yeah, it took someone a lot of work to make this map, you know, it's got a lot of software and hardware and just for you to listen to this conversation right now takes billions of bits i mean if you listen to this you know it, it's like a megabytes of information uh, every second um millions so all i'm saying is that all those details matters if one little thing went wrong in that data stream everything stops so uh basically the truth, though, is that we need to think about it way beyond what I'm thinking about, right? This is the next few years, right? We need to think about what we're doing. This is your life here on the planet Earth. Don't sit around and listen to me talk about this. Yes, it's really important in some sense, but what really matters is not getting a headache and really trying to do have a good life, you personally, and making sure that all the life 
planet works well together here. So I just, I can't explain it. I'm really sorry. I'm desperate to try and explain how awesome you are personally listening to this and everyone else is awesome. But I've just been really surprised, you know, and I've been really angry some days and I don't know, it's not good. So, uh, but, you know, uh, all I'm trying to say is life is getting better. So let's try to work on that part. And um, wherever you are on this planet, I just happen to be up in here. I've lived over in this side here too, but there's so many cool places and it's all interconnected all, all i'm saying right so uh and uh yeah so um hopefully everything has been interesting to you i'll, I'll rush through these photos one last time just because it's interesting on the camera just in case people want to pause it on a particular thing um so you don't have to waste your time uh going through this again and um, but uh yeah, and uh, I mean, there's some really surprising stuff in this for me still that we need to definitely look at. So, yeah, and uh, I'd really would appreciate your advice on things and thinking about what we can do. So, I hope you enjoyed the discussion, and uh, I'm going to try my best to po post this all online so that we can have a further discussion. Um, thank you so much, and hopefully... You'll get rid <laughs> I'll stop talking about this. Okay, see you later. So, yeah, I'm sorry I'm back a little bit here. Um, but, yeah, there's just so much more to the discussion here. Again, what originally started this discussion was not what I saw or see on the planet, but the question of the aurora and the North Pole and the South Pole. And then further, the discussion got even more important when I realized that our Milky Way is a flat disk. Therefore, meaning that the gravitational fields that interconnect everything in our galaxy are equator-based. So the equator has the gravity and the electromagnetic fields are actually on the North Pole and the South Pole. So there's various ways that things work um, and the balance between how we work between the equator and the poles is basically part of the solution to really uh, everything, the astrophysics and universally uh, in terms of spirituality. So anyway, so this is some more details on that. Um, I'll try to post these as well. So thanks a lot. Uh, and I will definitely be praying for everybody and all life on this planet. And I hope that we can really think about this in some really awesome and fun ways. So it's really fun. Thank you. So again, uh, there is a lot more discussion on the equator and the poles, definitely. So uh, take a look at all the details. Um, I'll try to post the maps and links and everything. So please uh, let me know what ideas you have. I would be very interested. Um, you know, friends have called me up and they've just been like totally ecstatic about certain ideas. And I've been so thankful they see like i see a problem they find the solution to the very thing that i thought was a problem so uh anyway uh and sometimes hopefully i found a lot of solutions for you in terms of how to think about all this